Click. I'm with the Office of Arts and Culture for the City of Boulder. I'm thrilled to be here today at the Museum of Boulder at the Tebo Center with Emily Zinn, the Director of Education, who's going to give us a tour of the new Boulder Experience Gallery. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, well, thanks for coming. We're really excited to share the new Boulder Experience with the community. We do have other exhibits on as well that we're not going to be going through today, but our um, amazing Living with Wolves exhibit and Eat Well, Play Well are family-friendly exhibits that you should also come check out. So the Boulder Experience is both interactive and um, provides some artifacts uh, to show visitors how to understand how Boulder became Boulder and is Boulder. Um, can you give us some back background about what went into the creation of the exhibition? Absolutely. So what we started with was what is Boulder today? Mm. And what makes it weird? What makes it quirky? What makes it innovative, unique? And then we work backwards and said, what are the most important things that led us to this boulder we have today? So to do that, we engaged over 300 people in the community that are experts in different fields that helped us figure out how to share those parts of the story, of the bigger story. Um, and we also worked with a team out of Maryland called Quattrofoil Associates, and this is what they do, is build interactive museum exhibits, and so that we were able to really scale our vision up and make it wonderful. That's great. And what makes this exhibition different from the others that you have in the museum? Well, so this is really going to be our showcase. So the intention is that this would be the, the thing that would give you the introduction and excite your curiosity and spark your interest. And then we can build on that with programming and other exhibits in the future. That's great. Do you want to go into the exhibition? I would love to. <laughs> So um, can you tell us why the exhibit overall and this exhibit in particular is, or this section of the exhibition is important to the community? Yeah, so we broke the exhibit into five thematic sections and this one is called Arapaho Roots. So it looks at our Native American roots and especially the legacy of the Arapaho tribe in the Boulder area. And it's really important that people in Boulder understand that part of our history. I think it's often overlooked, but we are all beneficiaries of broken treaties here. And so in order to tell that story, not just accurately, but tastefully, and in a way that really uh, engages people with the content and does it through the eyes of the people whose story it is, we started by taking trips to the Wind River Reservation in Oklahoma, meeting with Arapaho elders, and then ultimately actually engaged a guest curator from the Wind River Reservation. And so he developed this content. His name's Jordan Dresser, a very talented young man. And so there's Arapaho language spoken in here. All of the speakers in the animation are Arapaho from Wind River. That's fantastic. You want to go a little further? Absolutely. <laughs> so there's sort of noticeably a flow through the space. Can you tell us about that and then tell us about some of the artifacts that you have on view? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So we designed it to be a clockwise flow, <laughs> but you're welcome to enjoy it in whatever way you like. Um, our artifacts were really fun to select, and we actually did a lot of outreach to curate specific artifacts, uh, reaching out to Olympic athletes for them to go through their garage and <laughs> their own storage units and things like that. So that was a fun part of my job for a while. Um, so we have a collection of about 45,000 artifacts that's housed out in Gun Barrel. So we actually house the material heritage of the city of Boulder. And also next door, our neighbors, the Carnegie Library for Local History houses our archives. So anything two-dimensional photos and documents, and we have hundreds of thousands of them next door. So we selected uh, 244 <laughs> of our artifacts and about 300 of our images for this exhibit. 
That's great. What about this um, dress here, which is sort of obvious as an artifact? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is actually a really great highlight of our collection. This is Mary Rippon's dress, which might be a name that you're familiar with from Rippon Theater, where the Shakespeare Fest is housed. But she was not only one of the first faculty members at CU, but one of the first female faculty members at a state university in the country period. So she's a really important figure in history and is one that we claim her in Boulder. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make a note that if you're just watching the live, if you're just uh, coming in to visit us here on live at the Museum of Boulder, um, you can write a question and we can ask the wonderful director of education, Emily Zen, to answer it. Make them hard. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm prepared. Um, yeah, please. I warmed up. <laughs> Um, do you want to, I want to, I love this part of the sure. exhibition. Do you want to check this out? So this is where it starts to get interactive. Can you tell me about this piece and all of yes. it? <laughs> uh, so you may or may not know if you've been here for a while that really the country's first destination rock and roll recording studio was up in Netherlands <laughs> in Boulder County uh, called Caribou Ranch Recording Studio. and. Anyone who was anyone in the 70s recorded up there. So they, everyone from Elton John to John Lennon to Michael Jackson to Earth, Wind and & Fire and Chicago, and the list goes on and on. So uh, this is fun because it's a little kiosk where you can come and you can listen to recordings that were made up at <laughs> Caribou Ranch um, on your turntable. Yeah, some mm -hmm. Chicago, but this, this album, uh, if You Leave Me Now is on the album Chicago X, and <laughs> this is the 12 string that was actually played by Jim Gershio, who owned the Caribou Ranch Recording Studio on that album, and that's the gold record that they won for it. That's great. You must have had a fun time oh, uh, with this part of the So <laughs> much fun. Yeah, it, really. well, uh, the, the Gershio Ranch is a really, really special place, <laughs> and getting to go through their garage was really next level. Actually, awesome. the, the wood, there's some wood accents around the whole museum, including oh, right. right over there, yeah. and those are the sound panelings from inside the recording studio. Oh, so, a little Easter egg there. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Um, and what about this, another interactive piece? Yeah. Well, so this piece looks at Boulder the way it is physically today and asks, what if we had made different choices? So when you interact in here, you get to look at some of these choices and make an alternate choice. So for example, if we didn't build the university, it's likely that what we would have done instead is build the penitentiary, which is now in Canyon City. And so instead, you can choose to build the penitentiary or limit the height of buildings and have the boulder that we know and love or not limit building height and see what that does. And it doesn't just look at how the iconic Pearl Street Mall um, looks in Boulder, but it asks questions about the cost of living and the types of jobs here mm -hmm. and asks you to think critically about what might have come of Boulder if we'd made different choices. That's awesome. Um, and behind us, I'm sure that you've been able to see it. Um, this very, very striking piece. Can you tell us more about this piece? <laughs> yeah. So um, this is from our muddy part of our collection. Uh, this is the sign from Harlow Platts Community Park that was washed away in the Boulder floods in 2013. So actually, uh, this was collected, if you know the city pretty well, from Elks Park in North Boulder, which is oh. totally crazy to think about. I don't know how it made it north like that. Um, but it certainly shows the power of those floods. And also, I like this piece because it shows some of our collecting practices, which really has to do with what's important today. And so if you're thinking, like if you're going through your garage and go like, oh, this is a cool old lamp, maybe I should donate it to a museum. Actually, consider that we might be more interested in like your protest sign from the women's marches or something that's really happening and is relevant today. Maybe, um, maybe you have an iconic piece 
of the cannabis industry, which is a brand <coughs> new industry, and now is the moment when we would love to collect things like that. So mm -hmm. think about those things and, and consider us. That's fabulous. Yes. Thank you. Um, just a reminder, if you are watching us live, that you can type in your questions and we can ask Director of Education Emily Zen here at the Museum of Boulder. Um, she's ready for all of your questions. Something fun, something hard. <laughs> And this is a very small overview of the history of natural foods in Boulder. Can you tell us more? Do you have a favorite piece in here? Oh, I do. Okay. I do. This one I really love. <laughs> uh, this, to me, is an object that is iconic of natural foods and their evolution worldwide. So this is the cauldron that White Wave Foods, which is the tofu that we all grew up with, probably, if you grew up in Boulder, uh, was started in. So Steve Demos had this shipped from China, and he would brew tofu in it and then press it through this press. Um, but even though tofu is ubiquitous for us today, it was a really long process mm -hmm. and um, speaks to the spirit of Boulder and the spirit of innovation in Boulder that it was able to take hold here. I like it too now. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we have some questions. Oh, I'm nervous. So we have two questions on Facebook. Matt asks, how often are displays changed? So we have been open, the Museum of Boulder at TiVo Center has been open since May, and we have already turned over eight exhibits so frequently. Um, this exhibit is going to stay for a long time, five to ten years, um, but it's going to evolve through that time and it actually asks visitors to contribute to it. We're going to change out artifacts and content and digital things along the way. And we have one more question. Yeah. Jocelyn from Facebook asks, how does this exhibit differ from other exhibits at the museum? Well, so this is our foundational exhibit. So this really looks at uh, the community and tries to connect people with the community um, that we have today by looking at how it's evolved. So we'll add to that and we'll deepen the content and bring in other interactive and engaging traveling exhibits. Um, we're gonna brew up some of our own for next year. We're gonna do an archive 75 exhibits, 75 objects from our collection, and a really fun interactive family exhibit over the summer, uh, which is going to be challenge based. So come in with your families and, and solve a big gross sensory challenge with them. <laughs> um, so back to our tour around the exhibition. What about this big, beautiful space that you have on science and technology? I mean, I don't even know where to start to look because it all looks awesome. <laughs> well, so science and technology is such a huge part of the story of Boulder. And the it, it's really a, a global hub for science, um, especially when it comes to space and aerospace engineering, mm -hmm. um, astrophysics, climate and weather. Uh, and standards. So we actually are really lucky that NIST was willing to share an atomic clock with us. <laughs> so um, in the 60s, there was a cesium atom would pass back and forth through this. And this object right here would be the clock that all clocks were set off of. <laughs> Um, but also in here, you get to participate in some of Boulder's science. So uh, becoming a space weather forecaster and seeing what that work is like and why it matters. Um, we have a wonderful, you maybe can't see it from where you are, <laughs> uh, model of the Kepler that Ball Aerospace built for us. Um, but that was built here in Boulder along with so many other incredible uh, spacecraft that are up in space right now and um, and can engage in some of the science that comes out of here like this was actually built here in Boulder the the thing itself but this is also data sets that they study at NOAA and NCAR and um, the university 
And so like this looks at carbon distribution throughout the world. And so you can uh, explore some of the data that scientists work with here. Thank you. Yeah. And then we have almost a, um, a large part of the exhibition dedicated to outdoor sports and adventure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why would that be? So over here. Well, part of this is that Boulder is a hub of innovation. In fact, we heard often from the tech community that uh, they hear Boulder referred to as Silicon Mountain instead <laughs> of Silicon Valley, you know? Um, and so we do look at innovation in Boulder, but also there, the, the spirit of innovation extends into all these different aspects. And outdoor sports is one of them. So companies like Spider, they're not just dressing Olympic athletes every four years, they're changing the sport along with the athletes and, and um, pushing boundaries so that athletes can push the limits of human achievement even further. Um, but part of the reason that there is that uh, flourishing outdoor sports industry in Boulder is because the athletics and the athletes that live here. And um, so there's amazing athletes here and we love some of the objects up here and they will change out with, another, with other uh, amazing representative parts of the evolution of sports in Boulder and throughout the world, but I love this red Raleigh bike here. That was the bicycle that Connie Carpenter won the first ever women's Olympic road bike race on. And, uh, and that was her apparel as well. And there's actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the film, but there's a, a hair tie sitting on those handlebars. And so Connie's mother, had MS, sadly. And so she wasn't able to attend the Olympic race. And the first thing that Connie did when she won that race was she got off her bike, she took her hair tie out, hung it on her handlebars, and went to call her mom and tell her mom <laughs> that she had just won the Olympics. And uh, so we kept that hair tie on from That's that awesome. single day. You have to come in time. person to see it, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, objects from Arturo Barrios and Frank Shorter. These shoes were custom designed, uh, only pair or two pairs built by Nike specifically for Frank Shorter, the father of running. Um, and climbing as well. Um, climbers, everyone from Bob Culp to Gary Neptune, but also more recently, uh, Margot Hayes was the first woman to send a 515A, and so these are the things that she wore in that historic moment. And then, I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually do some, uh, some mountain rescue as well. Um, so become a, a mountain rescuer and take on some different scenarios out in the mountains to save climbers and hikers and skiers. Thank you so much. Yeah. I do have one more question. Do you have any other Easter eggs for people that are especially watching our live feeds? So they'll know something that everybody else won't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Let you me can think, think about on that. Um, <laughs> I stumped her on my Facebook feed. I don't there, there are lots of Easter eggs. I would have to think about a good one, though. Yeah. I think um, before we go, though, we do want to take you up to another highlight of the Museum of Boulder, which is the roof. It's beautiful. <laughs> and then I'll ask her some final questions on the roof, um, if Great. you don't mind. No, that yeah. sounds good. <laughs> it's beautiful out today. We got lucky. Yeah. Can I show you in here? Oh, sure, of course. Uh, ah. So this is the Google Garage. So we extended this story of Boulder innovation. Uh, and so this space is a space where visitors can come in and innovate. Um, so whether they're building robots or um, making electronics or laser cutting or climbing in virtual reality or mountain biking in virtual reality, that's what this space is for.
prepared to freeze. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? It's tough being here at the Museum of oh, Boulder today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, if somebody wants to come visit, how do they find out how to get here? Where are you located? Yeah, so you can look us up at museumofboulder.org and find out upcoming events, upcoming exhibits. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we are on the corner of Pine and Broadway, so that's the Boulderado right there. You'll <laughs> know it well. Uh, Pearl Street is two blocks this way. This rooftop is available for rentals. We have events out here. Over the summer, we did rooftop sunrise yoga up here. Um, <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you? A lot of exhibits that are really designed for families and children. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us today. Yes, it was a lot of fun. Coming. And I hope you all have any more questions. On were there other questions? Oh, were there any other questions? Is there any exhibit that celebrates celebrates Scott Carpenter in this museum? We do uh, look at Scott Carpenter in the exhibit, and we are going to be building a replica of the. Um, Aurora 7 space capsule, Mercury 7 <laughs> space capsule, uh, for that interactive challenge exhibit that I mentioned for right. over the summer that you'll be able to not just climb inside, um, but bring all your space food and pack up the way you would pack <laughs> it for your trip to outer space. That's so awesome. come back for that. <laughs> Thank you, museumofboulder.org. Museumofboulder.org. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks.